welcome back to the second session so uh, the next chapter is about money but then um, i thought we can combine money and fame together so we will do that in the next week so today um, we can move on to the next lesson that is lesson 10 on women don't you feel women is a blessing in the ministry isn't it today uh, we're going to address about women uh, so the today session will be um, mostly we are talking toward the men the ministry leader uh, <clears throat> those are um, male the pastors and the leaders uh, how to address men uh, women how to handle them and how we need to uh, be ourselves uh, cautious from this because in proverbs 726 it says for she has cast down many wounded and all who were slain by her were strong men so we need to be very careful we need to be very careful in this area but um, you know but it's not that we uh, don't honor women we are here to tell that we honor women and uh, at at our church, we have, uh, you know, most of our ministries have been headed by women leaders. And most of them are all part of our Bible college and you would have uh, known them personally. So we honor them. Okay. But at the same time, we are very cautious. So today's class is for all the males, yeah, of our class okay so well uh, so in this chapter uh, we addressed all the christian men in the ministry uh, you know aside yes there is somewhere that we fall is for the money but also women seems to be a major challenge for the christian ministry leaders to handle and we see uh, this area to be uh, you know a lot of casualties in this area and they are defined uh, that uh, many have fallen in this area so uh, what is it as the minister the ministry leaders the men the christian men have been attracted to these women who come to the ministry they seek help from the pastors so it is not like only for the pastors who are in the city or who are in the big church have these kind of challenges but then this challenge is also there in the simple, ordinary preachers in the villages and in, in the rural areas because the temptation in this area is the same for everyone. So when we go on these uh, <clears throat> mission trips and uh, then we, uh, we also have something called short-term Bible college for all the ministry leaders and pastors in the rural areas. So when we uh, uh, reach out the rural areas to equip them in the word, uh, we have a crash course of two months. And, uh, you know, it is an intense course from morning till night. We keep teaching them the word. It won't be like this. Uh, it will be, you know, back-to-back -back classes. And there we get to hear their heart, hear their challenges. Very simple people, very simple. So we may think that uh, the only problem that they would be facing is would be the finances. But then when they open their heart and when they share, it is the real struggle is not only the finance, but then it's the women. So these become the major areas that as a Christian ministry leader, we need to be mindful of because there are many leaders have fallen, many ministries have shut down because of, uh, you know, uh, falling towards um, uh, having a weakness towards women. So we need to be very careful how we conduct ourselves. This temptation is there for everyone. But the only difference is how each one handles it how each one handles it. It's not that God has not given us the grace or the strength to handle this area. It's sometimes we open door to certain areas. 
overthinking, having a overconfidence, saying that nothing will happen. I'm very strong in this area. The minute we say that I'm very strong in this area is where that we have paved a path to walk on it and see a fall in that area. This is something as a ministry, a Christian ministry leader, we need to be very careful. Personally, not much experience that I have in the ministry, but with little that I know, with little that I have, I've come, uh, you know, from our college, I'm uh, working among the students, serving with them. I've heard uh, their own words they share. And in their walk of their life itself, they have fallen and they've come back and shared it. So this is something that no one can be confident that I'm very strong in this area, not the one who's also teaching and preaching. We all have our own weakness, but then we all stand under the grace of God saying, God, help me overcome in this area. So when we share for men, I think even for the women, we also have our own weaknesses. We also have certain areas, certain challenges that we will also go through. So when we, uh, I mean, as we study, we study for both, okay, the men and women in our class. We can apply it to ourselves. When the challenges are there. So here we see that do not sleep in Delilah's lap. In, in the book of Judges, chapter 16, verse 19 to 20, we see that as she got him to sleep, that is Delilah to Samson, his head on a lap, she motioned to a man to cut off the seven braided of his hair. Immediately, he began to grow weak. His strength drained from him. Then she said, the Philistines are on you, Samson. He woke up thinking that I'll go out like always and take free and shake free. He didn't realize that God had abandoned him. So there, it's not the first time that he is sleeping in a lap, but many times he's been sleeping. But this time, he didn't know that his uh, braided hair was cut off. The minute it was cut off, the strength started weakening. So the minute Delilah told Samson that Philistines have come, he rose. He woke up immediately, but then he was not strong as what he was before. He thought his strength, uh, you know, would last forever. And he continued toying with what he knew that he should not do. But until one day, God withdrew from him. And that is when you saw that the weakness and he had a major fall in his life. So we, as a ministry leader, initially, we may think nothing happens. Nothing happens if we see. Because knowing the scripture says, even when we see a woman with our eyes in a lustful way is equal to committing adultery. So we need to be very careful with our eyes. Be careful, little eyes, what have you see? We need to be very careful. Looking at a beautiful woman is not a sin. But how we look at a woman is very important. If we look at her with lust in our eyes and a desire in our heart and then, you know, keep pondering on that, leads us to sin. So now what you saw, what you think, leads you into action. It will push you into the next. When you allow it, when you ponder it on it again and again, then it will lead you to an action. To go meet that person, talk to them in the form of ministry and then you know, leads you somewhere else. And that's why, uh, you know, uh, the scripture warns us, if your eye is sinning, pull it off. If your hand uh, is sinning, cut it off. So very careful because uh, it is powerful enough to destroy us completely. We need to be careful. We need to remind ourselves with God's work. Uh, word. So how do we come out of it? This thought is very common. It is there for everyone. This is the, one of the area, whenever we discuss it, it is one of the area, it is so challenging. Many churches or um, uh, many uh, denominational uh, uh, 
pastors or priests or fathers have addressed this issue on the pulpit to the church believers saying that when you come to church, please dress appropriately. Please dress appropriately. Because when they come friend to meet the pastor, meet the leader, ministry leader, they need to be in the modest of their clothing. Because one way they're guarding themselves, the other way they're guarding the other person, the ministry leader. Because the very sight itself will be so disturbing for that ministry leader to go and minister on the pulpit or to minister the other people. So why should we be a cause of temptation? So as a woman, we should also be very careful in how we dress, how we conduct ourselves in the church, in the ministry areas. One, no matter which season, which uh, uh, which generation we live in, there's something that you know modest dressing is very important. We need to see to it that you know we are neat covered. And then for the men, as a ministry leader, if you are coming across this kind of challenge in your ministry, during your ministry or much later, whenever you come across this thought and you have, you're, we are going through this challenge, one thing that we could do is rebuke the thought from your heart by reminding ourselves with the word of God, with the scriptures, because, because the scripture has the power to cast away the thought from our mind. Some of sometimes when I go through my own challenges in these areas, or uh, it can be different, it can be anything, okay, in our weaknesses. One thing that I have seen that worked with me is I keep claiming on First Corinthians two sixteen, where I say I have the mind of Christ. I have the mind of Christ. I command this negative thought to leave me in the name of Jesus. One thing we all know is by the wisdom that God has placed within us, we are, uh, we are able to discern what is right and what is wrong. The minute a thought comes to our mind and we know this thought is not right, even before it could grow within us, we need to rebuke it with the word of God. The minute we say the enemy will flee. He has no power over us, over our mind because we are the body of Christ temple of the Holy Spirit. This should be in our mind and this should be uh, our confession. The minute we confess, it actually brings much more awareness of who we are and how can we imagine or think or, or do like this. And that helps us to overcome such issues, such problems in the initial stage itself. And uh, so that we can abstain ourselves from every evil that uh, has a temptation that the enemy can bring to each of us. Uh, I know it is not easy, but it is a process, but we all can do it. And yeah, with this, we will move on to the next point. Treat younger women as sisters with all purity. So in First Timothy chapter 5, verse 1 and 2, we read that, Do not rebuke an older man. But exhort him as a father, younger men as brother, older women as mother, and younger women as sisters with all purity. So here we see Paul addressing it to Timothy, who is overseeing a church at Ephesus. Paul is um, saying, Timothy, there are several areas that is, uh, it is important as you pastor in a local church. So one of the important instructions that Paul gives Timothy is to treat the older women as mother and the younger women as sisters with all purity, with all honor. So when we treat them with all purity and honor, it is, it is inevitable that as a pastor or a ministry leader, we will not have any kind of, uh, you know, uh, any kind of wrong behavior within us, but then we will have a healthy, uh, healthy relationship with everyone. And it is our, it is our duty that we need to pray for their needs, listen to their problem, encourage them and counsel. However, as we do this, we need to guard our heart and our mind and keep our motivation, thoughts, emotions pure during the process, be honest with ourselves. 
if we sense any uh, 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 if we sense ourselves inclined to any young women or if we see ourselves if we notice any young women who have been approaching us uh, with some wrong intention both ways okay we need immediately we need to avoid it we need to stop that stop having any kind of conversation okay if um, if you feel that you are inclined to any younger women it is better that you uh, you know uh, you stop interacting with that person till you overcome your feelings your emotions over that person second if you see any young women intentionally with wrong intentions uh, uh, continuously coming and talking to you with uh, uh, with some any kind of silly reason or having always a, a counseling issue or coming to you for counsel or for different reason and every intention you know as a human i think god has given us that um, inclination like we can make out what's happening uh, between when we converse with a person is there a genuine need or is it simply to just to talk to us they are coming so when we find that we should make sure that we uh, uh, we assign this person to another counselor and also as a pastor as a ministry leader if any opposite gender okay it it is the same for the men and for the women in our ministry if any opposite gender seeks our counseling i'm not saying we should not counsel i'm not saying that we should not pray for them we can counsel we can pray for them when we counsel yes once or twice you can counsel but you see uh, uh, the reason is persisting or this needs uh, more sitting to counsel with that person to understand it is always good to assign that person to the same gender if it is a woman assign her to a woman counselor if it is a man assign him to a man counselor it is very important and we don't entertain counseling an opposite gender for more than two times okay and also in healthy setup maybe uh, like if at all uh, you are the only person who need to help this person there is no other ministry leaders or there's no one else to minister or to help this person and if you are married it is always good for you to keep your wife along with you and the same applies to the women it is always good for you to keep your husband with you when you are ministering and talking to an opposite sex and also while praying <clears throat> when we are praying in the church yes there will be many people coming towards us and asking to pray so when we pray we need to impart from a distance but leaving uh, you know we need to impart from a distance and if at all yes some places uh, sometimes we feel like we need to lay our hands so even when we lay a hand it is always good to lay hand on the head for the opposite sex and if at all you are uh, when you are praying your uh, if they say that uh, there's a pain on my shoulder or my back or whichever place they say it's not good for us to lay our hands in uh, instead we can ask uh, another women if a man uh, if a pastor is ministering a male pastor is ministering and there's a woman who's come with a stomach pain or uh, some kind of uh, ailment it is always good uh, not to lay your hand on that person but then you can ask another women a uh, minister uh, women or another leader women leader from the church to come and lay their hands on that women and you pray and impart from distance god is the healer it's not we god is the healer and god heals this is just to save god us and leave the mentoring women to another women as we already discussed and uh, yeah lead women ministers correctly so as a pastor or a leader of a local church and ministry god will raise many women who are serving and providing leadership under us in various aspect for example our uh, in in our own church we have a children church pastor 
okay and we have many many uh, uh, you know ministry like you know we have missions director as pastor nancy a children's church pastor as pastor selina maybe the first years may not know as she was teaching in the last year yes she will be teaching in the next semester so we, we can meet her she was a children's church pastor in many areas you know um, like for media we had before um, uh, a woman as a ministry head so different and we also had Uh, you know uh, administrator as a woman so many areas we had as a, a women as the in charge who's the leader even now we have many areas and we see them gifted and we see the anointing that they flow in that area it's so beautiful but as a pastor how pastor can relate to this ministry leaders the women in the church uh, they are married okay they all are married not all some of them yes a married but how pastor can minister to a woman who's already married we need to remember as a pastor we need to remember that this person is married and she's also serving the church okay so what we can do is we need to remember that her husband is the head of her and we are not the head so as a pastor we have certain boundaries way we can minister and we can step into certain areas but we need to give her the instruction and guidance when it comes to certain areas in the ministry but not beyond that beyond that it is her husband's responsibility to take care of her and talk to her and handle certain issues so as a pastor we need to be very careful not to step into any kind of personal boundaries other than the ministry areas that we can share and discuss where you can provide your guidance you need to stop with that itself as a women ministry we need to have certain timings also <clears throat> we meet in the office we talk to them and leave it there no uh, taking them into a private place or no taking them uh, individually trying to meet up with that person no we don't do that and also we encourage all the women ministers to uh, you know uh, be accountable to your husband because the bible teaches that in ephesians 5:22 we see that wives submit to your own husband as to the lord and also some of the areas where <clears throat> we see at apc and pastor been very careful is in this he has been very helpful but at the same time he is very careful he don't cross any personal boundaries he, uh, at our church office intentionally we have all our cabins uh, made out of glass which is transparent so if he had to meet with any women he meets in the cabin but it is visible everyone can see who is interacting to talking to in the same way if we maintain it is very healthy even at a bible college when i had to interact and talk to any of our opposite sex students i make sure that i'm not alone with that student i make sure that other students are also around it's a very big cabin or a hall so i'll say some of the students just stay around you as i talk and interact with this person so intentionally we make people to stay around be around there's no way one on one will happen with the opposite sex not more than two to three times or uh, not happening privately in a secured place without anyone around us we intentionally avoid doing that so that we can avoid many pitfalls treat them equal treat the opposite i mean treat the women equal and yet at the same time be gentle to them because that's what galatians 3:28 says there is neither jew nor greek there is neither slave nor free there is neither male or nor female for you are all one in christ jesus so the, we must remember that god's gift grace blessing or uh, empowering uh, and uh, given to all men and women equally so god does not have any kind of preference for men and women but still in some of the uh, churches and some of the um, uh, i don't know whether it's only in the villages or even in the city i've seen some of the churches they are offended for uh, for having a women preach in the church 
how can a woman preach she needs to cover her head she need she should not be speaking in the church they take out one verse which paul shared out of context and they apply it everywhere else and they dominate women so that is not something healthy we need to take this scripture and interpret it in the right way even if we try to do that they are not in the place to accept it so we don't have to get into any kind of argument because that is what they believe in but then as a ministry leader as a growing ministry leader each of us should be mindful that god has blessed each one with the gift grace and blessing and god has given that to men and women equally so we should not dominate or we should not consider ourselves inferior or lower but then give them the equal opportunity considering that we all are on the same level ground so both men and women are the heirs together of grace of life this is what peter says in first peter 37 so we need to treat both men and women as equal and we are providing opportunities to serve lead carry responsibility and so on so in the local church and in the uh, when we serve in the local church and the ministry we need to see how we conduct ourselves with the ministry leaders who are women and also with the believers we need to recognize them uh, uh, you know recognize their strength and weakness and at the same time we need to honor them we need to honor them with all respect and uh yeah uh, <clears throat> so next is both men and women have emotional needs for example there are common emotional needs uh, emotional needs when it comes to affection appreciation admiration or whichever area that the person is going through so each individual may find some of these very important for them so one thing um, you know past has written in his book that you know one thing that he does not do is uh, comment on opposite sex about her beauty or about her clothing okay he will leave that to if she's a married woman he leave that to her husband or to another women in the uh, in the church or in the ministry to compliment we as a ministry leader should not be having any kind of loose conversations like this be very careful because these type of talks can lead to much greater thing so to avoid those pitfalls we don't have to have any kind of uh, comment as such but then we can in a healthy way we can appreciate how they serve we can appreciate where they lead but we don't have to uh, 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 appreciate about the beauty about the dress which can lead or which can lead into a different tangent so intentionally we need to be very careful in how we speak and conduct ourselves with another women so as a married man who uh, who's a pastor or a christian leader here are some things that we should avoid doing for many ladies okay something uh, that i already uh, discussed avoid engaging into too much conversation with a lady let a husband or other ladies do this for her and avoid trying to be close companion or an emotional support for a lady let a husband or other ladies do this for her okay if she's not married so if she's married her husband will be there but what if she's single even if she's single be very careful be very careful not to be a uh, emotional support to anyone as i said if you're counseling just do it once or twice after that you need to lead her to a women counselor no matter how emergency it is intentionally avoid it because there are many families broken because of this many pastors family have been separated and many believers family have separated because of pastors stepping beyond their limit 
beyond the boundary what has been asked for they stepped into uh, believers personal family boundaries and many families have been separated and pastors family have been separated and there are many pitfalls some of them are unable to recover from that so we need to avoid such pitfalls and have a personal self defense plan so when you're praying for a lady as i said you need to lay hands on her head and if at all in any area we can ask somebody else to be there to lay hands on them and pray and avoid uh, always maintain a healthy distance avoid hugging avoid hugging don't meet uh, opposite sex individually any at a private uh, uh, private place in a private discussion always have your partner if you're married uh, get uh, come along with your partner to meet them or if you're not married you're single but you're serving in the ministry go with two or three people okay um, go with two or three people so you may think okay it's a rural area it's a village i can always go alone uh, no problem no always good to go with two or three people even if it is a city or whichever area you're serving in there's always a safety there's always safety when you are going with two to three people please don't go alone to any uh, opposite sex individuals house see to it that you meet them at the church office if at all you do not have a church office meet them at a uh, at a place where uh, you know something like coffee day uh, or a coffee joint and you know some place where it's crowded people are there everyone can see you it's always good to be there but again i would say do not meet one i mean personally meet with somebody ask them to bring along with them somebody you also be there with someone and avoid traveling with another lady together in a car as far as possible unless and until it's a life and death emergency um, you know it is always good to avoid traveling with another women whom you don't even know it uh, it's not like other than your mother sister wife or your cousins other than that it's not somebody else whom you i mean who serve in your church or who serve along with your side to take them alone in the car as far as possible avoid that there may be situation we can go oh it's raining heavily how will this person go or reach home there may be many reasons but what we can do is we can book a cab for them we can get an auto for them somehow you know to see to it that they are transported well to their home then you giving them a drop as much as possible you can avoid and uh, avoid uh, some goodbye or holy kisses yes uh, some of them take up the scripture uh, saying in corinthians paul wrote like greet one another with a holy kiss again it is um it is good to be avoided in our situation in our uh, in our time uh, this may not be very uh, pleasing uh, not very healthy in our church um, yes uh, some of the churches we see it's very common uh, or some of the tradition or in uh, and yes it is an international class i'm talking about our indian setting but then in international it will be very common to hug and kiss and um, yeah this is something that we tend to avoid because in our indian culture it is not very common and uh, i i don't know how to share it in international culture would that be right or what but that maybe we can take this as one of you all can take this as one of the topic on a thursday during mentoring hour and ask pastor on that but then this is one thing that you know we can avoid to guard ourselves to guard ourselves because at the end of the day i feel the feeling is same isn't it so um yes so this is something that we can intentionally avoid and be on double guard during moments of great triumph or crisis especially when we have success or crisis we need to be on double guard because this is the time when we fall this is the time when we fall for example david uh you know uh, uh, committed adultery with bechiba is when he was successful when he was very successful 
So when we are very successful, we forget about our boundaries and we relax ourselves. And when we relax ourselves, when we want to rest, is a time, uh, you know, uh, the, we become very vulnerable. And it leads to, uh, you know, lose our guards, let our guards down. So we have to be very careful. The same thing happens when we are in crisis. Again, we are uh, broken emotionally, we are hurt, we are drained, and we are very weak and vulnerable. Again, we let down our guards. We look out for a shoulder to, you know, to lie on. Be very careful. These are the times where we need to seek for our, uh, uh, for yes, we need and help. We need a crying shoulder, but then seek from the same sex so that you can avoid any kind of pitfall. That's the main reason that we should have good fellowship with our ministry leaders. So we know during our success and during our crisis, we will have some kind of ministry leader whom we can talk to and share our emotions with than having any kind of opposite sex ministering or seeking minister or console or being there next to us. So guard our affections, very important. Proverbs 4.23 Keep guard your heart with all diligence, for out of it springs the issues of life. Guard your affections. Very, very important to guard a heart. <clears throat> for Philippians 3.23 3 says, For we are the circumcision who worship God in the Spirit, rejoice in Christ Jesus, and we have um, no confidence in the flesh. We cannot take confidence in our flesh. You may be a very righteous man. You may be a very righteous man. You may be very gifted and anointed. But regardless of who and what you are, your flesh is poor and it's weak. We cannot take all confidence in our flesh. The minute, as I already said, the minute we take all confidence in our flesh, like I cannot fall in this area, I'm very strong. The minute we say that we are paving a path to enter into sin in that area. So we need to be very careful. You know, I've heard uh, many, uh, I mean, I've heard a, a, a very big preacher share it, um, uh, <clears throat> Uh, share it in the congregation when he's preaching. He says, I have allowed, I am accountable to my wife, and I have allowed my wife to question me in this area of women. And I've also told her to always be watchful on me in this area of women that I do not fall. So he has given that liberty to his wife that. Though I may be a minister of God, I may be a great minister, I'm rooted and grounded in the word, I'm anointed, no matter how powerfully I'm gifted, but the area of flesh is vulnerable. At any time, we may fall. And he says to his wife, friend of everyone in the church, I have told my wife that you cannot trust me in this area of women. And I want her to be watchful of me in that area. By E telling that, he's not uh, announcing it to the church. Okay, listen, I'm very weak and uh, women be very careful. No, it's not that. This area, everyone are weak. It is a common temptation where the enemy is waiting to plunder on the men of God. The minute we are aware that we are weak, it is good that we guard ourselves. We play certain boundaries around us. We make people, uh, we are accountable to people. We set a watch over us, our life, the way we live, so that we guard ourselves. We don't fall in that area. So see what are the ways that we could guard ourselves from certain areas so that we don't fall discern and destroy any kind of soulish bridges. If you find any kind of soulish bridge with any opposite sex, it is good that we prayerfully cut it, destroy it, which is not good. So with this, we end this chapter. Yes, it is a very difficult matter to discuss and share. Uh, but then with all humility, uh, we share this with each other because 
<clears throat> this is very important. Uh, it is one of the area as a ministry leader. It may be men and women. We need to guard ourselves how we interact and how we conduct ourselves with the opposite sex. And all that we do, remember, we are the servant of God. We need to conduct ourselves honorable to God because our body is a, bo a temple of the Holy Spirit. So um, everything that we do, everything uh, that we think, every thought is not hidden from God because He knows everything. So we cannot hide ourselves in any way from God. When we have this fear of God within us, there is safety. So I'm not saying that we will not face any kind of struggle. When we face, we need to come before God and ask God to help us, strengthen us, help us overcome. And if we have committed any kind of mistake, we need to be the first one to come in the presence of God and ask God, please forgive me, help me overcome from this area. The minute we acknowledge, confess our sin, acknowledge it and uh, avoid doing certain things, keep boundaries, put boundaries, set guards around us. God is a God of strength. God is a God of restoration. He can restore us back to himself. So with that, I end this session. I open up to the class to discuss, add, share, we learn. Sid, anyone, just share if you have anything to share. Okay, so I understand that there's no questions, it's all clear. Okay, we'll end the session with a word of prayer. Can I request one of us to please lead us in prayer? Okay, let me pray. Dear God, I thank you and I praise you. We welcome you. We welcome your presence in this place. Lord, I lift up myself, each and every student in your hand. Lord, we pray. Today, all that we studied, Lord, on fellowship and on women, we pray that you will guard us from every temptation around us, O oh Father. You have called us. You have chosen us. Lord, I pray that your right hand will rest upon each one of us, Lord. You will enable us to guard our heart and our mind. You will strengthen us in the area that we are weak. And you will be with us, Lord. You are a God who is mindful of good things for each one of us, O oh Father. You think you have a plan of a future to give us a good success. Lord, I pray. I pray, Lord, for each one of us, Lord, that you will strengthen us in the area that we are weak. And we pray that you will guard us from every pitfall, O oh Father. You will warn us. You will rescue us, Lord, with your wings. You will cover us, Lord, and keep us safe under you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. I hope the session was a blessing to each one of us. Yeah, see you all next week. Thank you. God bless.